Hey, welcome to the channel. I wanna start this video by thanking my subscribers. I really appreciate your likes and your comments. It means so much to me, and it's really what keeps me making these videos. So if you're a viewer and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, and I'll continue to make content that I think will help you make the most out of your life with your small sailboat. This next video I think is one of my best, and I hope you enjoy it, so here we go. If your friend is a good sailor and the craft is seaworthy, Yes, I will go sailing. Yeah, let's go sailing. I was just checking out the comment section of my last video and came across this comment, and I thought this could get interesting. It's a classic plastic battle between the Catalina 22 and the Compact 23. If you watch my videos, you may already know the history of Compact Yachts. So let's take a few minutes and get up to speed and find out who yacht designer Frank Butler is and the story behind the powerhouse company Catalina Yachts. Who is Frank Willis Butler? Frank Willis Butler is a complex personality as are most of the small breed of modern day Renaissance millionaires. He was born in LA in 1928. And just like me, he was a self-described loner who loved to draw. He joined the Navy at its peak, and then afterwards tried college, but it wasn't for him. Frank married a woman named Jean, and I believe they had two sons. He had gotten a job at a machine shop and befriended the boss. One day, Frank's boss jokingly said, man, we should go into business together. And Frank was so excited, he told his wife, his family, his friends that he was gonna be a businessman. I am a master of the universe. I deserve more. So he was cleaning out his desk in the shop and all the other employees asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm going into business with the boss. And then the boss walked up and said, man, I was just joking. Man, I was just joking. Sometimes you have to slap them in the face just to get their attention. Sometimes the truth is painful, Frank. Ouch. But it's made your cheeks all rosy and your eyes bright as stars. He was kind of devastated, I think, and he said, well, I'm gonna go into business anyway because I said I was gonna do it. I quit. And he did. What? So he started his West Coast Tool Company, called it West Co Tool. And he started making airplane parts and was very successful at it. But something happened to him in his mid-30s. He started sailing dinghies and he got hooked, like all of us altered the direction of his life. Mr. Butler's family was starting to grow, but his boat was staying the same size. You're gonna need a bigger boat. And he had his eye on the Victory 21, a Ted Carpenter design. Frank requested to have one built, and I believe he even paid in advance for the boat. The boat builder had fallen on hard financial times and was having difficulty finishing Frank's boat. He even loaned him money, but the boat builder could not repay the loan. One day, Frank walked into the boat shop and he was fed up that his boat hadn't been done and he demanded that the builder finish his boat. I'm disinclined to acquiesce to your request. In fact, he said, if you want the boat done, take the tools and do it yourself. It means no. So Frank Butler, being a man of action, did just that. He finished his boat and another 125 Victory 21s. The Frank bought the rights to the boats, and in 1964, he founded the company Westco Marine. Westco made a couple design changes, including a self-bailing cockpit and a sliding companionway hatch. Westco Marine quickly became Coronado Yachts, and most notably produced the Coronado 25. Westco Marine still exists and is a supplier for Catalina Yachts. You'll find the Westco Marine nameplate on the transom of many of the early Coronado 25s, which was a masthead sloop with a fin and a spade. Production ran from 1965 to 1975. Heavy 25-footer with a 47.78 ballast to displacement ratio and also had an outboard motor in a well. Man, I'd love that with twin transom-hung rudders. Yeah, transom-hung rudders on each side of the outboard would be cool. Like on the McGregor. Never mind. In 1968, Butler sold Coronado to the Whitaker Corporation. 
which already owned Columbia Yachts. It was the world's largest fiberglass sailboat manufacturer. Frank worked there for a year before having a falling out over a 22-footer with a movable keel. And someday you're going to make some lucky corporation one hell of a CEO. So Frank up and left the company. And he signed a two-year non-compete with Whitaker. He could only produce the small sailboats that Whitaker had no right to. Like the Coronado 15, the Omega, the Super Satellite, the Drifter, and the Victory 21. Frank founded Catalina Yachts in 1969 with a goal to build a hundred good boats at a good value. Frank's Mark I had a good long run from 1969 to 1995. In 1986, they introduced the wing keel. It was supposed to be better in light wind, more maneuverable, and have a good low center of gravity, but it was not that great going upwind. The Mark II debuted in 1995 and resolved a lot of the problems that the Mark I had. Catalina took their customer feedback and just made everything on the Mark II a little bit better. A more comfortable, spacious cockpit, more room on the deck, they redesigned the interior and gave you more options. Catalina takes credit for originating the one-piece non-structural cosmetic hull liner. The 22 was originally built in beautiful San Fernando Valley. Frank Butler bought the building in 1974 and turned it into the largest production fiberglass sailboat factory in the United States. It was a two-story building on 9.3 acres located on Victory Boulevard. The building was originally built for a company called Rocketdyne to test jet engines back in the 60s. That's proportion. It had a 32-foot ceiling clearance, and not a lot of buildings had that. Catalina Yachts recently sold the 187,000-square-foot industrial building for $61 million. After long, hard consideration, I have decided it's time to move on and leave the state of California permanently, and we're going to go to Florida. Then also had a plant on the East Coast. Then they started building them in Australia. Well, they called them the Boomeroo 22. They were also produced in England, where they are called the Alacrity 22. Okay, Alacrity means you want to do something. You're eager to do it. You really feel like doing it. Then they called it the Jaguar 22. Is it a proper Jag? They also made them in Canada, produced by Cooper Enterprises. I'm New sailors feel comfortable buying a popular brand for its community support and knowing that anything can be fixed. And that's just one reason why 15,000 of these sailboats have been sold. Catalina has gone on to build 85,000 sailboats, but some of the most beloved are its inaugural. Catalina 22. Following a brief illness, sadly, Frank Butler died in Westlake Village, California at 92 years old. I don't want to hurt any feelings, so if any of y'all Catalina 22 owners want to dump out of this video now would be a good place for those of you in the market for a 22 something foot sailboat and would like an objective comparison between the catalina 22 and the compact 23 let's continue people rave and seem to fall in love with the looks of the compact 23 with its classic lines it's just it's such a pretty boat love at first sight for me now i'm not going to call the catalina 22 ugly i'm just going to say she's got a good personality but beauty is in the eye of the beholder and it's only skin deep i want to find out what's in the core the deck of every commercially available sailboat has a core usually either wood or balsal and those two materials are both prone to deterioration and delamination now, i'm not totally against boats that have a balsal or a plywood core deck i mean i bought a j24 one of my favorite boats i've ever owned and it had a balsal core deck and a balsal core hull which is fine as long as you know the condition of the boat when you buy it and then you maintain it but um 
if you want to avoid all that, I'd much rather have a solid hull and a uh, deck that's cored with something synthetic. I don't want to work on boats anymore. That's the reason I bought this Compact 23. The thought of ripping out the deck core is about the last thing I'd want to do. When I come to the boat, I just want to untie it and go. If you've got a spongy deck on your Catalina 22, don't worry, there's lots of helpful videos out there. But the deck of a Compact 23 will never suffer this fate. Because the Hutchins Company has chosen to use silica, which is popped like popcorn, form tiny little bubbles, which is then applied with polyester resin in different thicknesses, thus creating a lightweight, everlasting core material. Now let's see what Catalina Yachts has chosen. The deck of the Catalina 22 is a fiberglass sandwich with a delicious plywood core. Some of the Mark 1's had plywood stringers, which would often rot. Replacing rotten stringers in some sailboats is more critical than in others. In some sailboat manufacturing, they put so much glass over the stringer that the wooden core is merely to form a channel, and all the strength is coming from the glass. I don't know. I can't say either way if this is the case in the Catalina 22. That's nice. All right. And in the early years, the hull to deck joint was plywood reinforced. Both the Catalina 22 and the Compact 23 have a solid hand laid fiberglass hull. Next! Let's talk about some keel configurations. Small sailboat manufacturers like to talk about their boats being beachable. But is a boat with a two foot draft really beachable? Maybe on the right beach where the water drops off quickly, but uh, the beach that I'm on down here in Texas, that is not a beachable boat. Compact Yachts only offers one keel on their 23 footer. The two and a quarter draft modified fin. And if you have a problem with that, then you can talk to our complaint department. It's a trash can. Maybe the biggest complaint of the Compact's performance is how high it can point into the wind. So they added a bowsprit, increased the sail area, increased the ballast by 100 pounds, still not good enough. So they threw on a uh, foil rudder, and I'm sure that helped. It makes me wonder if Compact will offer a swing keel or a centerboard in future Compact 23s to help with the windward performance. And if it's worth the additional complexity and maintenance. The Catalina 22 offers three keel configurations. You have the swing. swing keel, which draws two foot up and five foot down. Back in the 1970s, Catalina introduced the bolt-on fixed fin keel, which drew three and a half feet. Between the years of 1986 and 1995, you could get the new design, which offered the wing keel, which had a two and a half foot draft. The rudder on a Catalina 22 is fixed and constructed of fiberglass composite with a kick-up rudder option. A kick-up rudder comes standard on the Compact 23. Originally made of aluminum, they now come with the Ruddercraft foil rudder. At this point of the video, I think it's fairly obvious that I prefer the construction of the Compact 23 over the Catalina 22. Next! But now to be fair, Let's see where the Catalina 22 really shines. And that would be the cabin. Cabin boy. I'm not one of those people that thinks that everything that I own is great. In fact, after spending about 30 or 40 nights aboard the Compact 23, I can't say enough bad things about the cabin. Let's step below and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a lot like what the cabin of my Compact 23 feels like. Not a lot of room to move around. Not a lot of light, not a lot of air. I love the dark wood of the cabin. Kind of feels like a pirate ship, but just needs more space. The interior design of the cabin is based on bulkheads located under the mast to handle the compression and to stiffen the hull. This allows for a two cabin design, which gives privacy for the head located under the V-berth. That's understandable. Roger. But in later models, these bulkheads were partially cut away to get better airflow. And this undermines the whole head privacy thing. 
So we are left with a sectioned off cabin with little privacy. Next, the settee cabinet design severely limits the sleeping space in the main cabin. The cabinet should be higher and up and out of the way of the cushion. The table design makes it impossible to access half the cabin while it's in place. If everything you're doing is bad, I want you to know this. And now, let's take a look at the Catalina 22 interior. The Catalina 22 interior is bright, open, and usable. Pop the top and you gain 10 inches of headroom. Can you imagine this with Isinglass? The Mark I had the dinette table, which I really like. They did away with this in later models and really opened the cabin up. I can also appreciate how they cut the bulkheads back so you still have some structural support but use a curtain instead for times when privacy is needed. I don't think you're going to feel claustrophobic in this little boat. The Compact 23 has been running with basically the same cabin design from the beginning and I think with a couple changes, opening it up, they could really have a world beater. I hope you enjoyed the video and had fun watching it. It was a lot of fun making it. Please hit the like button if you did, and definitely hit that subscribe button, and I'll be back with more videos. See you next time.